Hello everyone, welcome to today's class on the web development course. Today we'll be discussing an introduction to CSS. In our previous classes, we discussed what the web is all about. We also discussed this HTML and a brief introduction into HTML tags. In today's class, we'll be talking about the web page styling. That is, what we use to style the web. Remember, the first one we did was introduction to web. And we did um, introduction to HTML. Where we said, HTML is a web page structure. Meanwhile, CSS is a web page style. Unlike the HTML that we use to structure our web page, we use CSS to style the structure being given to our web page. So what is CSS? CSS is a style sheet cascading Kasha sheet language that describes the presentation and styling of an HTML document. That is, after the creation of an HTML document, if you want to add beauty and positioning, the way it will look to a visitor, we use CSS to achieve that. The full meaning of CSS CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. The first C for Cascading, the S for Style, and the next S for Sheet. It says Cascading Style Sheet. CSS describes how HTML elements are to be displayed on screen, paper, or in other devices. Which means how a website looks on a web page. Is being determined by CSS. In some avenue, you would notice that there are some websites. The way they look on the mobile app is quite different from the way they look on a desktop, on a laptop, even on a tablet, and even smartwatches and many other devices. What determines these differences is CSS. It helps us give variations of display to the, the same application, the same website, but different display according to the device. These have been determined by CSS. Now, CSS is a lot of work. It can control the layout of multiple web pages all at once, which means you can write one CSS script, one CSS standard script. And it will determine how various web pages of your websites operate, which means it saves you the stress of creating multiple CSS for different pages. With CSS, you can just create one source page and it will have the same variation or the same kind of style on multiple pages. Now, let's move in depth. Let's give an example of CSS. Now, if you look at the right here, we have an HTML document similar to the one we've done in our first class. But there are some additions here. In this section here, you will notice that we added something called the link rail. This is used to attach an external style sheet to our document. And here you will notice that we add something into this div which we call it class. This div is an HTML tag which we'll be talking about in class to come. And this is are just contents. This is a CSS style. The style that you attach to it, it is a separate document written. Now this is now what we are using to style this structure. This is an HTML document. We are using this now to determine how it will display. Now, if you combine these two together, this is the kind of result you will get. 
let me explain now this is the css code the h1 the dot nav the ash footer greater than a they are known as selectors which refers to the element in an html file or document they refer to an html element tags that are already been declared in our html code they refer to them as if okay these are the things i want to give a style to meanwhile every other things between the curly braces that is from here down here and also from here down here and from here down here are known as declaration we call them css declarations which refers to the effect that will take place on a selector being mentioned that means the type of style we want to give to each of these elements being selected is being determined by whatever we declare within these boxes. The words between the colon, that is the first colon in the declarations, are known as property, and the ones after the colon are known as value. The first word you see here is known as the property, which means the property of these elements. Let's take H1 for instance. The property of H1 that you want to style. Now, the other one after this colon is known as the value that okay when you select this property color that you want to give your h1 a color at default they are black you want to change the color so the, this color you mentioned here is the property of this h1 so you say the color you want it to be what to be blue which means it will change the color to blue and you want the text alignment Instead of it to be in the right, say, uh, the left rather, the center, you want it to be at the right position. That's why you say text alignment. You said right. Then the, you want to give it a border, something to surround you. You say 1px. If I take you back to the previous page, you will notice what I said here. Look at h1 at this side, and this is a border. Are you getting it? The color is blue. All of these are being determined by the property and value. Now, the selector points to the HTML element you want to style, which I have addressed. The declaration box contains one or more declarations separated by a semicolon. Now, each, each of these is a declaration. That means property and value combined are known as declaration. And we end every declaration because sometimes a declaration might have multiple value an example is this your border it has a value of one pixels and dashes that's for its own you can have others as well but if this can have multiple values so to determine that okay i'm done writing this so that anything you put after it can also be seen as a new declaration we end each declaration with a semicolon so that's how css works so in our previous class, each declaration includes a CSS property name and a value separated by a colon. Now, this is just a brief introduction to CSS. In our previous classes, we will talk more about CSS. But for now, I'm just giving you like the overview of what CSS do. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.